I love, love, love this quote. It challenges me. It frightens me. It calls me to be something greater than I am. I like to argue with this quote because it's so frustrating. I wish it wasn't true. It is true for me. I am disturbed not by what happens to me, but by my thoughts about what has happened. It's my thoughts about what has happened to me that disturbed me. And when I grasp that, freedom, incredible freedom, this is one of my truths. Loss cracks me open. And you know what? Death times three cracked me open big time. It was supposed to. It was supposed to. What I discovered, and this may be true for you, today, in a week, in two years, but what I discovered was that I am the teacher that I've been waiting for. I'm that teacher. And I am the one who can end my own suffering. And those of you that have been with me for the last 20 years will attest that there has been much suffering. There has been much suffering. But I discovered that I'm the teacher that not only can end the suffering, but on a good day, does end the suffering. This is what I learned about grief. And I learned about this after Rory died. So this is just within the last three or four years. I love this definition of grief. Grief is automatic. And it's a learned response to loss. If you're a human being and you take a risk in loving, you will lose. It's part of the human condition. If you love, when you lose, you experience grief. It's automatic, it's internal, and it's learned. It's a learned response. I differentiate mourning from grief. It makes it easier for me to travel on a day-to-day -day basis. This is what I believe mourning to be. Mourning is an external expression of grief. I told you that grief was internal. Mourning is when we get the internal and push it out. It's the external expression of grief. It's when we go public with our grief in the presence of other people. And I promise you that mourning is a path to healing. If you are interested in healing, I encourage you to mourn. But there's a problem that we face. Mourning occurs in the present moment. It's the only place it can occur. But we live so much of our life either in the past. Oh, if only I had. I should have. Why didn't I? The regret. Or I live it in the future. How will I get through? How will I survive? Oh my goodness. Camp. Uh, uh. We spend so little time in the present. Only the present can free you of the past. And mourning can only occur in the present moment. This is the problem. Mourning, my friends, is socially unaccepted after about three to 10 days, if we're lucky. Other than that, 
No time for mourning. Not interested. Most people very, very innocently have a strong desire to get you to stop feeling. They don't want you to feel. The illusion that they're carrying around is that feeling the feeling is the problem. Feeling the feeling is the solution. The feelings must be felt in order to heal. But anymore, where is there a place when you can very freely, no holds bar, in the presence of other people, feel exactly what it is you're feeling, particularly when you're living with a loss? So I said that grief was the automatic, learned, internal response. These are some of the expressions of grief that we never talk about. Never talk about this. The most common thing I hear, and usually it's a whisper. Someone pulls me over and whispers, do you think I'm going crazy? I think I'm going crazy. Do you think I'm going crazy? I'm losing my memory. I can't stop eating. I sleep all the time. When I walk, I feel like I'm going to fall. I'm losing my balance. I'm going crazy, aren't I? It's an expression of grief. It's normal. It's natural. What, it's what happens to us. Why am I caught so off guard? We never talk about it. As if that wasn't enough, I've got another list of more expressions of grief. I feel guilt. I feel free. I'm impatient. I'm so relieved that they finally died. All expressions of grief that we never talk about. And those of you that are nodding your head know exactly what I'm talking about. Next. This is what I discovered along the path. It's a phenomenal quote. Counter to what everyone says and what we would like to believe, do not resist the pain. Allow it to be there. It's counter to everything we have been programmed to believe. Do not resist the pain. Is it painful not to resist it? Absolutely, of course it is. It is more painful to repress, to deny, to pretend. In the long run, that is more painful. Do not resist the pain. Allow it to be there. Surrender to the grief, the despair, the fear, the loneliness, or whatever form it takes. Witness it without labeling it mentally. The feelings and emotions connected with grief have a beginning, they have a middle, and they have an end. And when we attach ourselves to them, they stay with us. So if one is able to observe the flow, there's a continuous flow, if possible, embrace it. Tom, why would I ever embrace it? Because the minute I embrace the pain, I move from being a person in pain, I immediately move and I shift. And I become a person who is capable and able of embracing. And embracing with kindness and gentleness and love and compassion feels very different. Who exactly is it that I'm embracing? Myself. When I'm able to embrace the totality of everything that I'm feeling, an immediate shift occurs. Then see how the miracle of surrender the embrace is the surrendering. There is a miracle of that surrender that will transmute deep suffering into deep peace.